Welcome to part three of our Mecham Auto Auction coverage here in Kissimmee, Florida. I hope that you've seen the first two episodes. If not, they'll be linked below. But let's get to checking out these cars right away, right now. And as I always say, let's get after it. Yeah, check out this classic 65 Corvette big tank coupe. The only known tuxedo black 1965 big tank fuel -y. estimate 250 to 300,000. Paint is you know, flawless on this car. Beautiful, beautiful. Just and way out of my price range. Come cool, over here, we've got a 1970 Dodge Hemi Challenger. One of 22 four speed. Challenger RTS he's produced. Once again, that gorgeous purple that I love. That Mopar purple. You'll see cars, most of them are in really great shape. You'll see varying conditions, but in this special section, these are all super clean, beautiful cars. This thing is, is just great shape. Absolutely great stuff. Estimated 175 to 200,000. Wow. 19 Chevrolet Chevelle LS6 factory triple white built with build sheet. 454. All numbers matching one of one, it says. So this one's probably gonna go for a couple of bucks. You can see people checking out the car, kind of inspecting it and getting a closer look at it. You know, uh, people who are just curious or interested or potential future owners. The car is in great, great shape. Man, this does look, this does look very nice. The white paint, I hope this video does it justice, but it's uh, very, very good. It's going to go for 175 to 200,000. Is this a Baldwin Motion? It is. It's a 1969 Chevrolet Corvette Motion Phase 3. Unrestored with 15,000 miles. Well documented. Beautiful color, as you can clearly see. Someone bought this and just took insanely good care of it. They baby this car. I don't know why you'd get rid of it, but maybe it's not for sale or it's already sold. 600 horsepower, four speed. Wow, that was a lot. That's a lot of power then. It's a lot of power now. So, okay, so it's got like minor, like the, the armrest. You know, who cares? 600 horsepower Baldwin Motion Corvette. So it's got some autographs on the back headrest. They're kind of hard to see the window. Wow. So I guess it's already sold. <laughs> All right. You know, it's one of my favorites. If you've been watching the other videos, the Copo Camaro. This is in a really wicked metallic green. Once again, very. Kind of plain looking for Camaros of that time, but you could sneak up on people. There's that gorgeous 427. It's a full rotisserie uh, restoration, meaning the, the, the car is actually completely stripped down. It's put on what looks like a rotisserie for a chicken, and it's just completely brought back to life. So this car is fantastic. Looks like it would go for 150 and 175,000. Right next to it, a 1971 Pontiac GTO, and definitely a color from the 70s. But still, uh, great car. One of 21 four speed high output 455 GTO convertibles produced in 1971 with that signature blue Pontiac rock. 
definitely a 70s color on this baby. Uh, looking to go for between 100 and 125. What's the name of this paint? Hmm. This doesn't say. Maybe it does, I just missed it. Has that reddish brown interior. Let's go with this kind of dark gold colored convertible white top. Gorgeous classic Corvette. Corvette matching in just outstanding shape, not cracked or chipped anyway over time. Black and red interior. Really gorgeous. Yeah, I like that two tone, that black and that red on the inside. Estimate 80 to 110,000. And this is a uh, convertible as well. That hard top removes and then you can um, put on, or you can remove it then just leave it at 1962 Chevrolet Corvette convertible, the last first generation Corvette ever produced. Last solid axle and the last first gen. So this will go for, for a few dollars. I think it's estimated to be in the mid 100s, 150 to 200,000. Wow. Look how stunning that paint is. I mean, just so smooth. Good looking car. 1964 Chevrolet Corvette Convertible Fuel Injected 327. One of 1,325 produced. Which there's a lot of there's a lot of black Corvettes in this particular section, but that's that's fine by me. Great, great looking car. I know that they have classic, uh, a classic Corvette on that show, uh, Lucifer. And this thing just reflects and pops and just looks great. Estimate 100 to 125,000. So, as you can see, there are no, uh, you know, there's some good deals to be had, but depending on what section you are in the show, there's a lot. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button thumbs up share with your friends that goes a long way and hit that bell icon also because it gives you instant notifications when new videos like this go on we're also on instagram facebook and twitter this one's estimated to go for 120 160 000, 1965 corvette convertible bloomington gold certified 1966 with factory side exhaust. So this one came from the factory with the side pipes. Really wicked looking. I like those side pipes. Estimate 110 to 130,000. 1967 coupe. Top flight winner. It's got a 427, it will, obviously it's marked on the hood. $150,000 to $200,000. Out of my price range. All of these are out of my price range. 1969 Corvette L89 Coupe. Bloomington Gold certified tank sticker. One of 390 produced. So cars here are well documented. They are you know, really meticulously well taken care of, or meticulously restored. Because you know you can see that black cars, man, yeah, black paint will, will show every flaw, every shortcut, every mistake. In what you see. This one's estimated to go through, go for one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand. And we come here, a 1930 Bentley Blue Train replica. How do you build a replica one of these? I don't think it comes in a kit. Extensive coach work. Can you put your gas in here? Can you cool it? Is that your radiator? It's interesting because I know this is a, a replica, but it looks... Like it would be a chop top car, like it, they did not come this way. 
but perhaps they did. You know, I don't really know a lot about these. But if you look back here, you've got your seat facing us. It's a right-hand drive vehicle. Very cool. I love this, though. I wonder if that was factory at the time or when they built this. So. <laughs> very, very interesting car. So, this is uh, pretty wild. It's got kind of this vinyl or leather work all around the outside of the car, not just on the roof line. It looks like it might have already been sold. I'm not sure. And right here, a 1969 Camaro Baldwin Motion Phase 3. So, this is functional. Feeds right into your air. You kind of see the carburetor in there. One of the last Motion 427 conversions. Look at this. <laughs> That's wicked. And, you know, I, some people, I don't like the hood. I don't, I, 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 it's all about power, guys. This one looks like it might have already been, uh, been spoken for. So, who knows what this one went for, but wow. Come around here to the back. It's got the hood pins for the trunk, so it doesn't... Pull up, removes completely. 427 turbo jet. Look at those big wheels in the back. Let's take a quick look under that. Let's get you some suspension shots here. There we go. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Be interesting to see what that one went like. <laughs> Real stunning GSX here. I <laughs> love the black and red stripe on the yellow there. Very, very clean, very cool. Very much of its time. This is, uh, this is something else. Nice gauge on the hood there. This one estimate 125 to 150,000. Who would have thought the cars of this era would ever have gotten that high in value? That's pretty insane. And right next to it is a 1969 Pontiac GTO Ram Air 4 convertible. This is one of 45 Ram Air 4 four-speed convertibles produced in 1969. And I wonder if you went to the dealership back in this time, you said, hey, I want that convertible. Oh, it's got a four-speed, it's got Ram Air. I wonder if you knew how rare it was. You just wanted it because it was cool and it was fast. So, but it does have a functional hood. That is what Ram Air means. It's not just a, a faux inlet. Estimate 175 to 200,000. Has this kind of pearl white, little kind of goldish, kind of weird color. <laughs> and over here, we've got a Dodge Charger RT. Look how big this car is. I gotta walk all the way to the back here to, to get the full thing in shot. And it's a two door four seater, y'all. This thing's massive. But pretty good looking car. Um, and uh, you know, I've seen a few of these out here today the purple with the green white interiors on various vehicles. Really like it. Like it quite a lot. Uh, really good shape. That's an interesting uh, center console there with the lip around the shifter. Cool. Estimate 200 to $225,000 for this. Got the functional hood there. Ah, oh, that's a lot of money. But a stunning, great looking car. And right next to it, we've got a classic 427 Corvette. This is a 1967. It says it's Bloomington Gold Benchmark and Special Collection. Let's get you a better shot of it. There we go. And that just pops. That looks really, really awesome. Hope you're liking what you see here. This is going for 350 to 450,000. Yikes. We come over here, more black Corvettes. This is the black Corvette section, I suppose. L88, this is a third gen. What year exactly? A 1969. Right over here, we'll get you a cleaner shot. The 1969 L88 Corvette offering, sold as a pair. 
So you got this one, and then you got this convertible right next to it. Of course, you can remove the tops from the other one, but this is uh, a convertible version. Wow, so both 427s, uh, both it, I don't know if they still called it Tuxedo Black then, but great looking pair of cars. Really, really outstanding. And right outside the auction, we've got a Porsche 911 GT2 car. Might go for up to 250,000. And we've got a whole series of Porsches here. Look at this, we got classics. There's a beautiful classic I will show you all in just a second. But we've got a Carrera S here. Uh, looks like it might have already gotten taken. Cla oh, look at this, look at this. A 1989 911. Estimated for two hundred sixty to three hundred thousand dollars. That's a big old chunk of change. And right next to it, wow, these are these are great looking cars. I wanted a Porsche once when I was like a teenager, and my dad was like, "You don't know how much it's going to cost to fix that thing." And he, he's right, one hundred twenty-five to one hundred fifty thousand. This is a nineteen seventy-six Turbo Carrera. Get you a full shot of the vehicle, and then over here. The classic, the beautiful, beautiful classic right here. Now this is something else. It's a 1958 Cabriolet, and it may have already been spoken for. It's already taken, perhaps. I love the big bubble design. It just, you know, the lines flow really well. It's a smooth, great-looking car, not overly complicated in its styling. That is pretty wild. All right, we are here with this gorgeous pearl red uh, BMW. What is it going for? Between fifty and sixty thousand. Nineteen eighty-eight BMW M3. Really great shape. Good-looking car. You know, I like these cars. I think they got good style. It's got aftermarket wheels on it. It's got the clamshell hood. Uh, interesting kind of back in there with the spoiler and all that. Come down here. We've got. An AM General Hummer, or uh, what did we call them, an HMMB or something like that. But uh, definitely uh, a large vehicle. Uh, I have worked on many uh, Humvees, and I, I like them well enough. This is a civilian version, though. It's got the snorkel, uh, they've got the clamshell hood. Uh, let's see. Yep, well, there you go. It's got all your, there's, your, there's how your uh, radiator is mounted, that's how air comes in. Cool the vehicle um it's obviously this is a civilian version so it's got slightly more comfortable seats but it's got a lot of the suspension and and handling characteristics of a military vehicle especially all that military leg room now imagine having about 50 pounds of crap on uh, you know vest rounds m4 yeah knee pads don't make a joke and uh, it changes the uh, enjoyability a little bit. And of course, this has got the, sort of like the pickup truck bed version in the back. We had some of those there, but typically it had a uh, canopy over the back or, a, or like a hatchback style thingy. Gorgeous. Dodge Viper. This looks like a first gen car. V10 power as all Vipers are, and hopefully they'll stay that way. Uh, estimate 35 to 40,000, 1993 Dodge Viper RT10 Roadster. Wow, so that's what I'm going for. But, I don't know, I, I love Vipers, I'm not saying anything bad about them, but they, uh, they hold their value like other cars, and I find that very surprising. Come down here, got uh, your Mazda, was this an RX-7? Pretty wild. Got a rotary engine in it. Estimate thirty-five to forty thousand. Yes, I believe this has a rotary engine. Correct me if I'm wrong. Turbocharged and intercooled, one point three liter rotary engine. Those are pretty neat motors. I don't know if anyone's currently producing a rotary engine. Any manufacturer, big or small. And there's a lot of Porsche here. Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. 2008 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S estimate for 90 to 100,000. So that's pretty, uh, 
pretty good car. Yeah. I love my classic Pontiacs. I say that all the time, but this is beautiful. A Pontiac Star Chief, 1955. Now look at that hood element there, or ornament, I should say. <laughs> this thing is gorgeous. The color is gorgeous. It is in outstanding condition. Looks like it's already been sold. It's convertible. Look at that. Look at the dash. I know it's kind of hard to see with the window up. You know, beautiful chrome, beautiful painted dash, two tone interior, kind of with gold and this green color. It's very similar to the convertible and the paint color itself. Just something, just outrageous. Just love. I love my old Pontiacs. And this thing is wicked. It's right up there, man. It is right up there. So who knows what it went for? But you know, you know, you know, you got a happy owner now. Come around here. Got 427 Cobra right next to a C10 uh, step side pickup truck. Really good, really good shape. Beautiful white paint job. Got the Hugger Orange 327 block there. Looks like this one has been uh, spoken for as well. It's sitting lower than a stock pickup truck, at least that's what it looks like to me. So it's probably a resto knob. Get you a nice wide shot there over here the classic resto mod Chevrolet sold as well I think so the longer we go the more we see the more I see more sold vehicles here if you like what you see hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit that bell icon for instant notifications this is a multi-part series as you know and please share with your friends that goes a long way if you're interested in supporting us further we're on patreon we're also on Instagram Facebook and Twitter here's a 1957 Chevrolet, the Bel Air, beautiful color, that orange metallic, that sort of front orange is what we call it in Texas. I'm going to swing around here real quick to a 1967 Pontiac GTO, and that beautiful blue kind of reminds me of the blue that the engine blocks are painted on Pontiacs, or at least these classic Pontiacs that stopped uh, a long time ago. I don't mean just with the shutdown of the company, but the car is... Uh, gorgeous gorgeous to look at so and every year they kind of got a little change in some of the grill design the rear end so yeah, they're pretty easy to spot once you get familiar with them 66 being my favorite year of course beautiful Jaguar right here now a lot of people you know they say oh they're in this year of Jaguar that year Jaguar the the quality wasn't up to snuff and I, to a certain degree I think that I think that's true but what you can do is I believe that you can take the rear end out of an F body and an LS engine and jam it into this car I think I know you can cram a Chevy small block in here and so if you want to get rid of those reliability issues just get a LS in there 1996 Jaguar XJS the car that's been sold as well Beautiful Chevrolet there. The paddy wagon. Vets, Camaro. This is a 69 Z28. Looks like it's got an RS package though, judging by those headlights there and the, some of the additional chrome accents. So a lot of these over here seem to have been uh, sold and there is still so much more to see let's keep getting out got a 1997 Porsche 911 right next to a what year is this 88 Porsche 930 turbo and look at this exotic Lamborghini Huracan definitely with lots of aftermarket uh, parts and things put on it uh, I wonder if this is a 6104 or the 582. This is the 582 B10. Uh, uh, lot manager has key, dual clutch transmission. Uh, okay, over $150,000 in upgrades. Novatech wheels, Mansory Racing Italian sports kit. So they do it. Mans Mansory does a lot of these. Uh, aquatics exhaust, custom uh, detail paint interior and exterior. 1016 carbon fiber custom painted hood. Upgraded custom sound system. So. Not only did they pay a chunk of change for this car just stock, but they really kind of made it their own. It's interesting, you know, you see these cars 
and they'll do all this customization to a car that really does not get modified by its owners very much, and then they turn around and sell it. And I want to, I want, I want your opinion on this car. You know, some people say, oh, don't modify Lamborghinis, don't make them look like this. Other people really like it. I want your take on doing this to a car, or at least a Lamborghini. Because it's one thing to modify old hot rods, that's been done forever, at least here in America. So this is, oh, if I saw this in the back, I could have just spotted it without reading it, it was a 580. So what, I, what do I mean by 610, 4, and 582? Well, this car comes in a couple, well, it comes with several packages, but one of the major, most noticeable ones is it comes with uh, all-wheel drive, 610 horsepower V10, right? So 610.4, all-wheel drive. 580-2 means it's 580 horsepower V10, rear-wheel drive. Now, what would be cool is if they gave you all the power, that 610, with this rear-wheel drive setup and a stick shift. Never going to happen, though, sadly. 1957 Bel Air convertible, beautiful orange color. Uh, once again, kind of shows up as red on the phone. Real sorry about that. Really, really neat to look. So, so the, like I said, there are some exotics here. So we saw that Lamborghini, we saw the La Ferraris in an earlier video, and we have this here. Is this a um, what is it? A two. To, oh, 308 GTB. So, okay, I was way off the mark. 1977 308 GTB. Uh, I don't know if it's been sold yet or not. There's no estimate on it. To get you a better shot of the vehicle there, though. Very nice. Very awesome car. Over here, we've got a Ferrari F. 360. This is the hard top silver with the black interior. You know, the silver with that kind of darker red really looks good on this car. So, this it's got a whole list of everything that's been done to it, or maybe all of its maintenance, perhaps. So, really nice car. And you can actually pick these up for a pretty sweet deal. You think they're going to be over 100 grand, they're not, unless they're like a Modena or some sort of special, rare, or custom job. It's a Modena. It's a Modena? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't look close enough, but there's a gentleman here that uh, pointed it out to me. This is a Modena. So if you look, yep, a Modena, a Modena 360, model year 2000. Wow. Come around here, you got your big, jacked up Chevy pickup truck. Custom suspension. Mm, I smelled a cigar just now. I love cigars, so it doesn't bother me a bit. That's pretty wild. I wonder what it's going for. If you like big classic trucks, jacked up trucks, this is it. 1957 Chevy Bel Air and that beautiful, uh, it's kind of a creamy yellow color. It looks a little green right now, but very nice. Come around this way. Classic Resto Mod Chevrolet pickup truck. I kind of like how this looks. It's got an uh, aftermarket version of rally wheels, and it's got uh, hubcaps or center caps, I should say, center caps that can be found on a 1967 Camaro, as well as many other products of that time. But I think those center caps on those sort of modernized, larger version of rally wheels really suit this truck nicely. Got the nice big chrome grille, beautiful paint job, Check out the interior. I think you can actually open this up and get in it, but I'm not gonna do that. This is sold? Is it sold? Yep, it is sold. So somebody's happy. So look at that, got the beautiful uh, wood bed. Great work done to it. Oh, look at the Corvette race car here. One seater. That's something else. 1956 Chevrolet Corvette convertible. Do you really want a passenger when you're right, driving one of these? Of course not. Leave the wife at home. <laughs> Pretty wild. So lots of American iron here. You know, got your Corvettes, got your Mopar. Camaros, Chargers, Challengers. I see a lot of Mustangs. 
But, uh, well, we did see a lot of Mustangs in a previous video, so. Classic first gen Camaro. This is a 68 right here. Next to a Ferrari 550 or 575. I'm not sure which of They're kind of hard to tell apart for me. If you've seen the movie Bad Boys 2, this car was in it, right? Uh, the owner, Michael, or the, excuse me, the director's personal car, uh, his 550 was in the film. That's what they're driving around in. And then Ferrari got wind of it and said, well, we can give you a car to put in the film as well if you need a, if you need another one of these. But at that time, the 550 had stopped production and it went to 575. So both cars, both the 550 and the 575 are in the film. But most people, even I have a hard time telling the difference. I couldn't tell you. I'm going to get up uh, close to it so I can get you a a better view if it's a 550 or a 575. It's a 575 M, so it's 515 horsepower, 5.7 liter. It's automatic. Looks like it's probably been sold. 2002. So yeah, so this is a 575 M. The director Michael Bay's was a 550. But you can see both cars. I think there's a little bit, bit of a styling difference in the front down there. I'll have to go back and, and check it out. But both cars are in the film and. If you look real close, you can tell they're slightly different. Okay, we've seen this uh, 68 Camaro from the back. Well, here it is from the front. L48, 354-speed Hearst equipped. So if this has been sold or not, probably went for a decent chunk of change. And then down there, you've got to check under the stitches, you see how clean it is. Well taken care of. Studebaker truck wow that's cool that's pretty wild and you come down here and here's the 68 camaro and good lord why don't you wash it i mean i'm sure you know i'm not trying to say anything bad about anybody's car but why 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 just i don't get it it's, it's, paint's all faded that's fine you can repaint cars that doesn't matter numbers matching doesn't even, doesn't even matter to me but the unwashed it drives me nuts. GMC Cyclone. You know, this beat a Ferrari in a drag race. Now, I know you say Ferraris aren't built for a drag race, but this did in the years that it was produced. Very rare. Once again, this one's very dirty. I don't know why, but this is probably one of my favorite trucks. Favorite trucks for a lot of enthusiasts. It's, uh, and it, of course, it's not been meant for uh, hauling or towing. It's actually built for speed. And these are actually really wicked. I doubt those are factory exhausted, although I could be wrong, but it's just so... I mean, it's in good shape. It appears to be in good shape. The interior is is nice and clean. It's just so dusty. I don't know what happened to it. Like, there's uh, some dust on the dash, too, but, you know, you could clean that off. So I'd be interested. If you know why some of the vehicles out here are dirty, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Very interesting to find out. Well, that's not subtle. We have an Oldsmobile high output 455. This is a Hearst edition. The white and gold kind of give that away if you're familiar with these cars. Functional inlets there. We have to go faster. We have to go faster. Muscle car days. So, very cool though. It's a 1969. Just, uh, <laughs> it's over the top. But the muscle car era was about over the top power and speed. Not necessarily safety, but you know, it's not why you get these cars. Another classic K5 Blazer. We've seen some in some of our other episodes. This one is all jacked up and the big tires on it. Great looking vehicle though. In great shape. 1972, fresh restoration loaded with options. That's what it says. And it's also code for buy me for the right price. <laughs> Oldsmobile 442, another one. Really wild. 
it's so wild to see this, see a lot of these out here while we've been shooting this series. Now check out this green machine, Dodge Charger. Definitely some aftermarket uh, choices put on this one. Of course your wheels um, are obviously aftermarket. Your Willwood brakes, which are fantastic, aftermarket. Still, no, wait a minute. Fitec. Is Fitec the company that makes those um, fuel injection systems that fit under their lactic carburetor? No, not on both. If you know, educate me. Leave a, leave a comment down below. Real stunning green metallic paint. No striping, not a lot of badging. Just really, really neat. Seems to be an award winner, I'm not surprised. 750 horsepower, five speed. Got a carbon fiber dipped uh, gas cap here in that green and black carbon fiber. That's pretty neat, neat touch. Has the black stripe with a yellow line around it. And a metallic green bumper. Let's check this out. I'll get you a better look at that. <laughs> Lots of wild, wild stuff here. When we come over here, we've got a classic Chevrolet pickup truck with SSR wheels. Chevrolet SSR wheels on it. Although it looks like the color's been changed on them. They look sort of like a gunmetal gray. It's really beautiful looking. Uh, shaved door handles, no badging, smooth, really beautiful black paint. This interior looks like a Chevrolet SSR's interior. We had an SSR recently uh, on our show. You should definitely check that out. That was a lot of fun. That's the professionally shot show. And the hood is down a little bit. I don't want to start touching it or anything, but uh, let's see if I can at least get a shot in there because I bet it's something worth taking a look at. Can I get in there? Oh. Aaron, <laughs> takes to the front there. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I figured you'd like that. <laughs> wow, this is uh, decked out. So it's a classic Chevy pickup truck but with lots of SSR on it. The SSR dash, center console, SSR wheels. This thing is pretty wild. I love that combination of old and new. Yeah. Look at this. Oh wow, this uh, Hellcat is uh, pushing 1,000 horsepower. Wow, that's a... Why do you need 1,000 horsepower? Because you can. 1941 Wiley's Coupe Street Rod. Or is it Willie's? Wiley's? If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. The bell icon will give you instant notification when we go live with new videos. Share with your friends because that always means a lot. This is... Sorry, I, I want to talk to y'all and I see a car and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. 1964, 6'4 Impala, 300 horsepower, 327. Excellent, excellent shape. A wicked and very popular here at this show, Buick Grand National, probably the only muscle car from the 80s and probably one of the best 80s cars, if not the best. Had one of these on our show, had the pleasure of driving, great owner, great guy. A SS1LE, a really great car, really designed for the track. It's got the um, ZL1's track suspension on it. You can always notice them by the black wheels, matte black hood. And right next to it, one of my favorite fifth gens, a lot of favorites for a lot of people out there, the Z28. This is a track purpose car. Sure, you can drive it on the street if you want, but it's, of course, it's got functional air. It's got the flow tire. It's one of the first times they did that where they cut that out. Track suspension, big wheels. Uh, you can have uh, lighter glass put into the back. It comes with no sound system. It's just a bare bones kind of car. And I, and I don't say that in a negative way. If you just like speed and you kind of want to go back to those muscle car days where you could have everything you didn't want stripped off the car, this would be the one for you. It's powered by a naturally aspirated 427. So this thing scoots. And right next to it, fifth gen uh, ZL1 Camaro supercharged. 
LSA motor, and I like it because they haven't put the black wheels on it. So everybody likes to put the black Z28 wheels on it. They've kept the ZL1 wheels on there, which I'm a huge fan. Of. I could, I could see myself getting one of these and modifying it, but never uh, tearing it apart, tearing it down, uh, you know, and, and doing crazy things with it. I would keep those wheels on it, maybe lower it you know, an inch or so. Really wild stuff here. This concludes part three of our Mecham Auto Auction coverage. I hope that you are enjoying the series so far. Please subscribe if you're enjoying yourself and a thumbs up. It goes a long way. And don't forget to check us out on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the whole World Wide Web. We're everywhere. So I hope you're enjoying it. And without y'all's support, we don't have a show. So thank you.